12-sided stories is for mature audiences and often deals with topics that may be difficult for some listeners. Discretion is advised. Step right up, step right up. Boy, howdy do we have a cure for what ails ya. A miracle podcast from California, IA, Death Rail, a rules light, story heavy haunted west game from 12 sided stories, guaranteed to take away boredom in no time. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And welcome to Death Rail. This is our Haunted West actual play. I am Wes Otis. I will be your balladeer. I have some wonderful players with me. Let's start with Jay. Hi, y'all. Jay Holfam here. And today you will get to know him more, but today I'm playing Cooper Gale. Hi, I'm Pooja, and I am playing Chetna Shinde, a gunslinger. Hello, I am Saint or Saint Spider, and I am playing Marisol Koyopoto. And she's a good old cowpoke. Hey, I'm Michelle Otis, and I am playing Mary O'Shaughnessy, a very friendly grifter. <laughs> Before we start, please consider supporting the show through Patreon or on coffee.com spelled K-O-F-I. Now, on with the show. All right. Today we are playing a Haunted West game, which is published by Darker Hue Studios. The settings timeline, called Reconstruction diverges from our own when John Wilkes Booth and his co-conspirators assassinate President Lincoln and Andrew Johnson, which then in turn makes Lafayette S. Foster the new president of the United States. This setting of the American West is very different from the one portrayed in Hollywood movies and even in our own history books, which often leave out hard truths about racism, enslavement, and genocide. Even though Haunted West is fiction and there are some supernatural elements, the setting shows the West as it really was, a melting pot of many cultures and peoples. The book states that this is a game of hope and a perseverance of marginalized people who are fighting for a better tomorrow. I'm glossing over a lot. The book is over 800 pages long and is packed full of so much great stuff that it would take me several episodes to go over everything. I highly recommend getting the book for yourselves, diving into it. It's for everyone and is well worth your time. Okay, you all are a posse of hired guns that helps root out former Confederate soldiers turned terrorists after the Civil War. You are working for the newly formed U.S. Regiment called the Buffalo Soldiers, mainly in the Texas Territory and along its borders, helping keep peace against outlaw raiding parties trying to cause problems for the new state of Sequoia, which is located where our Oklahoma is today. At this time, you are all in a small town on the Rio Grande that I want you to name. What would you name this mud puddle of a town? Brantsville? (laughs) <laughs> That's the first thing that came to my head. Sorry. <laughs> Grantsville is good. That's right. Grantsville, we're done. We're done. <laughs> they named it after Ulysses for his uh, efforts in the Civil War. So Grantsville it is. All right. Grantsville is a half horse town. It is uh, It is small. <laughs> it doesn't have a lot going for it in, in that way, but it's perfect for you all because no one comes here, and that's why you've picked it as your place of residence. You're at the local saloon. You're throwing back a few beers with William Smith, who's your contact in the Buffalo Soldiers. Finally, after a few weeks without any work, he's come to talk to you all, and he sits down. He, he's an older gentleman, probably in his 50s, black with white hair, He looks like he never gets off his horse, like he's always on the trail. Look, I got a job for you, but it's not your normal thing. 
I found out about a train that's going up through Texas and Sequoia on its way to Denver. The information I've got is that it's full of gold. And not only is it full of gold, but that gold belongs to General Custer. And I think I'd like a piece of it. Now, some background. The current party in power of the United States is called the Radical Republicans by some. They're a progressive group who is fighting for real change within the United States. One of their political opponents, General Custer, got an opportunity to go south to Mexico to be an adjunct general and help with training the Mexican army. And for their part, the radical Republicans decided that this was a good way for them to have better relations with Mexico while also getting rid of one of their rivals who might cause problems and who has been against the reconstruction act that they were trying to pass. It is well known that Custer is looking at the possibility of running for president in 1870 and could overturn some of the reforms that are being pushed through now. William cracks a smile and says, now, this is an official. The government's not looking for us to lift any gold off of Custer, but I think that it would do us all good if he wasn't so flush with money all the time. So what do you think? You want to help me out? Well, my pockets have been looking mighty thin, so this sounds like the perfect opportunity. It sounds good, but sounds scant on details. Yeah, I would love some more details. Also, how, how uninterested in all of this the federal government is. If it's real, I would love a chance to hurt this bastard. Well, now... Officially, the American government does not believe in doing unlawful things against their own citizens who have technically not done anything against the law, technically. So let's say Custer decided to come up here and run for president and we knew that he was going to push for a more conservative democratic platform, the federal government wouldn't want anything to happen to him because that would be against the law. Off the record, we have things that need to get done and Custer could get in the way. So it's a gray area for sure. I'm not gonna lie. They would never say, yeah, go do it, but I don't think they're gonna be crying if he loses some money. And uh, that's why I'm not speaking to them about it. As far as they know, bandits hit a train that was going through Texas. Not anything out of the ordinary. Happens all the time. One of the reasons why they were so eager to get that rail made. Well, they're pushing to get a rail to go across the entire continent. That's, that's going to be pretty impressive. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> Yeah. Well, look, you all will hit the train. I'll give you a map of the area. I'll be honest, I don't have a lot of information besides knowing that there's gold on it. There might be weapons. And if there are, we might get a medal for stopping them from coming in illegally. It's his train, so who knows what contraband will be on there. All right. That gold is earmarked to help out his many allies up here and though he hasn't announced it he's been sniffing around about a run for president and right funding those grassroots of course right yes. of course hmm. so anyway if you're all in then i'll uh i'll get you the information you need absolutely dangerous but i'm interested <laughs> seems worth it to me all right yeah all right so as a group, you have to make a few decisions. Are you going to try to stop the train or are you going to try to get onto the train and take it over? You have to figure out and have a conversation now about how you want to approach this. Remembering a few things, Texas does have areas where there are ridges and mesas and all that where 
you can get a high vantage point. Uh, the train is gonna go through some valleys, that kind of thing. It also has some areas where it is flat and open and prairie. You know, Texas is a very large state, even with its upper part cut off. So any kind of terrain, pretty much you can think of, except for swampy, unless you hit it right around the Rio Grande, is there. So if you have an idea that requires you being up high or down low or on flat land or whatever, there is an area on the map that William gives you that you can find the location that you need to do your plan for. As for ordnance, get dynamite. You can get weapons. You can get all of that stuff relatively easy. That is provided mostly through William and the Buffalo Soldiers. They will give you the things that you need. But if you're caught, you're doing this on your own. William's not going to, you know, swoop in and fall on his bayonet to help you out. And he makes that very clear. If you are escaping. He says, you know, you want to go up to Canada you, or, or lose yourself in the Dakotas, you know, live with the Lakota nation for a while or whatever. Just disappear. Uh, don't go south. Don't go to Mexico because that would be the wrong place after trying to steal something from a train coming from Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, that would also be the last place they'd look. Yeah, maybe. You might get lucky. So with all that information, uh, go ahead and talk amongst yourself. Uh, we can say that it's later on in the afternoon. You have all the information. You're at your campsite and you're talking about how to make this heist work. Not a heist movie. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> Quick question. So is the, the this is out of character. The So we heard that the train has left its initial destination already and is in transit or it's still it hasn't left its initial it has left and but it's coming from like the center of like it's coming from like Oaxaca like low and it's it's going to get here he said you've got like a few days like maybe 4 or 5 days before it hits Texas proper okay well Either way, we're looking at the people operating the train. Custer's got to have guards on it. Mm hmm. Likely. And depending on the source of the information, we have to calculate that perhaps it's a trap or there's something else. Also possible. I mean, something does sound real. Sounds too good to be true. Sounds a little fishy. A little hinky. But if they set real bait in that trap. Mm, exactly. I mean, listen, we can still, you know, make off with some good stuff. Though that begs the question. If we don't take out everybody on that train, we're going to have to disable them some way. I mean, look, I, you know, we wear masks. Our identity should be secret, protected. I say we stop the train, remove what we want, blow up some tracks, tie up some people, and then get out of there. Going in big and loud. I have to say, I kind of like that, because uh, a lot of people could uh, be blamed for it. Mm hmm You know, I think my sisters, Maria and Alicia, they should still be around the family farm. I know they might be a little mad I've been gone for so long, but if I can get word to them in time, perhaps we can learn a bit more about... Our initial departure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can send out a couple of coded telegrams and get back some information. Sounds good. I mean, more information is going to be better. Absolutely. And, I mean, Marisol, if you're... I mean, they might lose a couple of heads, but... But a herd of cattle across the tracks looks a little less uh, oh. conspicuous mm -hmm. than blowing them up. How close are they? <sighs> okay. I understand life is tough out here, but I would love to not <laughs> <laughs> just throw away animal lives, animal experiences, and even the wealth within well taken care of cattle. I just, I understand, and I don't judge you, but I'm going to have to let you know that is a last resort. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, I wasn't talking about having the train hit them. 
Okay, okay. See, that's where I was losing you originally. I was talking about making a obstruction that they can see, so they stop. Because nobody's driving a train into a herd of cattle. The cattle are going to win. You would be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I do not want to know anyone who is driving a train into cattle. Like, yeah, no. No. I don't want to know if that's a thing that people do. Okay. I mean, if that's reasonable, I will go with it. But I think trains will win. I mean, it's also like, I don't think that the, I don't think that the cows will get here in time, but it was just something to throw out. Like, let's try it. Given alternate plans. So we don't just have one plan and then go straight with it. <laughs> well, how... Uh, <laughs> Wes, I'm asking out of character, how hard would it be to derail? I know it's more than throw a few pennies on the track, but it's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, as you might know, according to the History Channel, 15 out of 10 people <laughs> died in the West uh, riding trains. <laughs> it really depends, because a lot of times they have small bridges between... Where there's like a little gully or something mm -hmm. and they'll do a small bridge. You could take that out. I anything that messes with the actual track will derail a train. Yeah. Easily. Okay. Yeah. And it's not like modern, like, you know, in Japan where they have the speed rail mm -hmm. and it's on like the modern, like yeah. really big track. These are yeah. not, not the same thing. So yeah. The classics. So no, it doesn't take much to fuck up the track. Basically, mm -hmm. um, I don't know where to take it from. Honestly, <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm thinking we tamper with the track in a quite remote area, some place that uh, help wouldn't be coming for a few days. Yep, I like it. I'm I'm into it. That sounds, sounds like a good plan. to me. We have a couple of wagons hidden, waiting to take away the gold. Mm -hmm. Yep. So here's a question. You all know from your years of having to carry gold that it's heavy as shit and hard to deal with. Now, there are four mm -hmm. of you and you're all very, very equipped to deal with a lot. But, you know, if there's a lot of gold, it's going to be harder. Are you going to hire any hench persons to go with you? I would say no, because, you know, more people, more cuts, more mouths. I would just say, let's get a, uh, like Mary was saying, let's get a wagon. Mm -hmm. Two. Or two. And that should be enough. Trust me, gold's heavy. Gold. And and if he has enough gold that he's put it in a train car. Mm -hmm. And if it's not gold, but he's got his own private train transporting whatever it might be. We're still talking the possibility of volume. Yes. That's true. But just remember, we want to take enough for us. But the bigger thing is to n deny him gold. Mm hmm. So, again, with the boom booms. <laughs> and if it's weapons, then, well, yeah, we can take some and then what, throw the rest in the dynamite. <laughs> exactly. Right, right. Makes sense. Uh, now, originally, just so you know, Jay, I was thinking that Cooper would have a wagon that he took with him that was basically a rolling lab, as it were, uh, for his gadgets and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you're used to driving wagons and, and everything like that. You can decide to, like, maybe take less stuff. I'm not really going to penalize you for that kind of crap. I don't... It's more fun, you know, if you throw stuff together and, you know, I'm not going to... What's your encumbrance? Um, so... Yeah, so that was just a thought. You have a horse and a wagon that you can have, like, a, a rolling lab. Kind of like a Breaking Bad. I don't, anyway. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Breaking Bad of the Old West. <laughs> the Old West. Anyway, so it sounds like you want to derail the train. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where do you want to derail the train? You know, as Mary was saying, we want to derail it far from any town. Right. Mm -hmm. And far from any prying eyes, or probably one of those valleys that you talked about. Right. Yes. Would be good. Yep. Are you thinking small, little gully, or are you thinking big drop? Gully. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah. That's probably safer for us. Of course, if, if we did a big drop, the, the drop would take care of a lot of the people on board for us. <laughs> 
It might. But if all we're doing is taking out the guards and tying up the people who are working on the train. Yeah. True. I don't feel as comfortable just willy-nilly collateral damage. Exactly. Yeah. Not everyone in Mexico is down with General Custer. Sometimes it's just about the paycheck. True. It reminds me of the on the movie Clerks where they're having the conversation mm-hmm. about the independent contractors working on the Death Star and then getting exploded. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're not. <laughs> it's, I yeah. mean, technically a train is just transportation. We don't know what's on it. They might not yeah. know what's on it. All they do is operate a train. We're not talking about people who are, you know, making Gatling guns here. I mean, if we are, then we deal with it when we see them. All right, let's do our first roll real quick. I need Saint and Michelle to roll a d20. We're going to be rolling against your personality trait. You want to get underneath your score. Saint, you get a plus four because you're dealing with your family as a contact. And Michelle, you get a plus two because of your contacts in the different saloons. Saint, I think you want to roll of under a 14 and... Michelle, you want to roll under a 23. I'm using the cool purple one you guys gave me. <laughs> yeah, real physical dice. I rolled a one. Okay, so that's great. I rolled a two. Wow. Oh, all right. That's great. Well, here's what you find. When they loaded up the train, it was in the dead of night, which isn't that shocking, but there seemed to be maybe twice as many people loading the train up that would need for any cargo, even gold. They were loading up a lot, and there seemed to be a lot of people getting on the first three cars of the train. The train also looked strange. It's been modified somehow. It looks sleeker than the normal train. When the smoke comes out of the top of the steam pipe, it has this weird ghostly whine to it. And the other thing is there seemed to be a lot of kids, or at least that's the word that you hear back from your uh, contact there. They said there were a lot of kids getting on, uh, people that were short, like maybe three to four feet tall, getting on this particular train towards the back. So they said they are, there's six cars plus the engine. The first two cars were loaded with what seemed to be adult people. The third car is loaded with, they're calling children because they look short, but this was all at like two in the morning when this, when this thing left really early. So it was, it was very bizarre. I'm not going to lie. The way you keep saying, well, at least they think they're children (laughs) is not really. Doesn't help. No, 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 it does not. (laughs) <laughs> and then the other two cars where the last two two cars where they loaded all the cargo into they definitely had at least six guards jump on the back so you have at least four people in the back and then you have two people on the last car caboose area scanning around looking for any threats that might be coming So that's the information you get about the train. It is definitely a different design. It's a newer design that not many people have seen. They loaded it in the dead of night. They had a children's car full of of kids and the adults took up the first two and then the children's car. And then the last two cars are all of the different cargo that they loaded on. And then the back had at least six guards in it with two of them on the outside of the train looking out for any possible problems. That's the information you get. Well, that means that just taking out a bridge underneath that train is right out. Yeah. Right. So what the hell? I'm not about to kill a whole bunch of children. If they are children. I mean, what else would they be? I don't know. Yeah, it's so interesting that Maria just kept writing seems like children. Like, that's so what made her feel so weird about it. Mm hmm. If I were in Ireland, I'd say leprechauns, maybe. I mean, listen, you never know. (laughs) I mean, what would he be doing with a bunch of leprechauns 
in Mexico, though. I'm just joking. Leprechauns are fairy stories. <laughs> Listen, I have heard some rumors of some things out in Sequoia and out in the territories. People have seen some things that they can't explain. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna let that slide. Either way, what is he doing? I don't know. It's Custer. He's a terrible person. He's doing terrible things. If they are kids, child soldiers, we've seen worse. Could be anything. I say, like I said, I say the plan is we'll tamper with track slash blow it up, stop them in a valley. We'll have the high ground. We can take out some of these guards on the edges and then rifle through the train, take what we want and blow the rest of it up. And if there are kids there, we'll let them go because chances are whatever he's doing with them is bad. Well, I mean, we'll just have to get them somewhere that they can get taken care of or brought back to their families. Hmm. So I guess for kind of secluded place, is there a place to split the difference so we can get some possible children back to civilization? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I said, you Texas is a large, very environmentally diverse area where you can find pretty much anything uh, that you need. <laughs> so if you want to do this closer to a town, but not so close that you'll have federal agents on your butt right away, you can. Sweet. Rootin' tootin'. <laughs> Yep, I like it. Okay, well, so with all that information, you take a look at the map, and you're able to find a perfect location. It's a valley with several different rock formations and things like that, with a small bridge that you could take out. And it's not far from a city, so it looks like a perfect spot. The main thing that William stresses is that you want to get it done before it hits Sequoia, because Sequoia is an actual state. This is a territory, so the rules are a little bit more uh, loosey-goosey. Yeah. All right. Let's fast forward to you setting up the actual train heist. I will just blanket say if there is something that you want, you have got it. You can whatever. You don't have to worry about any of that. You are professionals who have hit trains before. You know kind of what you're doing. You're going to know what to bring. I'm going to dress as a man and cover my face. Okay. Sounds good. So you head out to this area. You find a place where the gully is, I'm going to say, three feet down. And there's a little rail bridge that bridges the gap for you. I'm going to say it's maybe four feet maybe five feet long at most. So it's pretty small. It's a good area that if the if it goes out, the train will hit the embankment and basically stop completely. It won't like plummet down 10 feet or whatever. It'll be a jolt. One question I do have is, do you want to try to warn the train before it hits this? Or do you just want to blow out the bridge right before it hits it, and then you, you do your thing. I would just want to blow out the bridge and then, you know, swoop in. Okay. Mm-hmm. We don't want to give them too much warning, because if they're on as high alert as they sounds like they are, then we need to maximize our element of surprise. Also, do we want to bring in one, two more guys? Especially if we have to deal with all those children, assuming that they are children. I mean, listen, you're the gunslinger. I just make things that go blow up and clickety-clack. I would say maybe a couple more people drive in wagons. And that way, if they are children, we can just load them onto the wagons and send them back to town. All right. And that way, we also don't need to split it with the fellas. We can just give them a flat fee because they're not boarding the train at all. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure we, and out of character, I'm sure we know people, like we... We know a couple of, like, trustworthy souls, or we could find a couple through William. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I am in this weird in-between place of who to speak and jet to speak. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> All right, Jay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll against your explosive rating to figure out whether or not you set up all of the dynamite correctly to take out this little bridge. If the bridge does not get taken out, are you going to ride after the train or are you going to try to get ahead of it and set this same situation up again further down the track which one would you be most likely to do 
if we knew there is a similar place close up ahead already since we've been scouting everything, I feel like then that does make sense that we would try to ride up instead of just boarding and going literally yeehaw. I am definitely open to either, but that was just my first idea. Yeah, it depends on how fast the train is going, too. That, too. I was thinking, oh, yeah, what's uh, what's our top speed? Our top speed is one horsepower. <laughs> one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what if her... <laughs> You know that the next little bridge like this that would be in an area that makes sense, a couple of days up. No. Okay. Your luck roll did not go well. If the explosives don't work as advertised, which I'm sure that they will, because Cooper is a mighty fine tinkerer. I am good at things. Gadgeteer. (laughs) (laughs) So if the explosives don't work as advertised... We're not going to be able to catch them by surprise again that way. Yeah, no. Then I say we run them down. Yeah. And since we picked out a gully that is near enough to a large bend where the train would have to slow down. (laughs) Okay. Mm. That gives us more of an opportunity to actually catch up. Smart. Sounds good. Since we have been told that we could have whatever we want for. (laughs) Yes. Environmental setups. (laughs) I'm completely fine with players having narrative control, so go for it. That also (laughs) helps us because if the train hits that broken piece of track at full speed, then... Ouch. It could be bad. That could be bad. It will. So it's late at night, and you have a couple of wagons with two people that you've hired to possibly take children back to town. These are covered wagons. Uh, You didn't really tell them much beyond that, you you know, you want them to take civilians away and get them to safety. That's basically... Or cargo, if, you know... If (laughs) if need be. (laughs) And you see off in the distance one single light as the train comes hurtling towards you. And you realize real quick that the, the train looks very different from what you're used to seeing. The light is much lower. It looks much sleeker as it's flying across the tracks. And it's going way faster than you've seen a train go before. And usually you hear a chug sound. Mm. But this is more of a ghostly whine as this sleek train goes through the night and the plunger's in front of you Cooper so you go for it Yeah. so you hit the plunger down and there's this huge explosion takes out the bottom of the bridge and the tracks kind of go to the side and the train is moving at a speed that's completely negates any type of braking quickly and it hits the bank goes down maybe three or four inches automatically and hits the dirt and there's this huge sound of metal bending and the train comes to a complete stop the very last cart falls on the side i'm gonna say that the two gentlemen on the back of that cart have been thrown clear and are unconscious slash maybe dead. The train is just sitting there with steam coming up from it in the moonlight. You don't hear anything coming from the train. Oh, but do I hear anything with my extra perception? Mm. (laughs) No. Can I roll for it? (laughs) I will say you don't need to roll for it. You literally hear nothing, like no movement going on. All you hear is the slow hiss of steam coming up from the engine compartment in front. There doesn't seem to be any lights. Nobody's screaming for help. It's completely dark. The only life you see are the two gentlemen who've been thrown clear and who are laying on the ground probably 10 or 20 feet from the caboose. Well, I say let's ride down. Yep. Mm-hmm. Well, we just... This is strange, but 
we stick to the plan, right? Yeah, we stick to the plan. Let's start with the caboose and start working our way forward. Check the bodies on the ground. If they're breathing, hog tie them. If they're not breathing, leave them be. <laughs> All right, when you approach the first body, it's laying face down. And when you turn it over, its skin has been on its face, has been basically taken off. And underneath it, you see this copper metal skull and a lot of different clockwork-like mechanisms. Jesus, Mary and Joseph. Well, I am interested. Oh my God. What? And then you hear a whirring sound and its eyes click back on and it starts to go for its gun. I kick the gun away from the hand. Okay, Saint, give me a percentage roll on athletics. So 39. Right. Okay, cool. And you want to get under it. All right, let's see. I kind of thought it was higher. Oopsie. I rolled a 19, so I am underneath. Yes. Excellent. So you kick the gun away. Just real quick before we get into this, where is everyone else? So so Mary went for one guy. Are the two guys close together or are they separate? They're separate. They just, they flew in opposite directions. I was with the same guy that Marisol is with. So the two of you went for that one. And then Cooper and I would have gone for the other one, right? Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Okay, Cooper and Chetna. So you hear the commotion behind you. And when you reach the body that's laying on the ground, I would imagine you're probably a little bit more cautious. It doesn't move at all. And finally, you get close enough to notice that it has literally almost snapped in half, like there's been major damage to it. But it, again, is a metal person. Is it moving at all? It's inert. It's inert at this point, yeah. That is no natural thing on this earth. No, it is not. That is weird and also very cool. And I'm just going to need like five minutes here. <laughs> sure. You So you start checking out the... the oh, yeah. Thing. Well, I mean, I'm trying to remove its head. Okay. Absolutely. Definitely trying to remove the, the inner workings, but definitely the head. Okay. So why Cooper is trying to remove this head, Mary and Marisol, this thing is reaching out for you. It's, it's grasping at the air, trying to grab onto you. And I think we should start with some initiative for everybody. So you want to roll a 1d10 and then add in your initiative bonus and just let me know what you get. Nine. Ten. So eight for me. Ten. Oh, wait, plus three, 13. Yep. So you're 13 or so. All right. So uh, this thing's heavily damaged. So I'm going to say, Marisol, you get to go first. What do you want to do? Woo. All right. So it's hand-to-hand combat. You can shoot it if you want. Okay. Doesn't have to be hand-to-hand. Let me go with my 38 Colt Lightning. Wait, no. The Winchester Repeater. Excuse me. (laughs) (laughs) What am I thinking here? Yeah, I just want to fire. You know, I'm I'm cautious, even though this is happening very quickly, because I'm thinking, is it going to bounce off? A 22. All right, cool. A 22, actually, just so you all know, a 22 is called an ace. That means something cool happens. Doubles, except for 11 is always because they wanted, he wanted to do a snake eyes kind of thing. 11s are always fails, but a 22 is an ace and you get an extra cool thing. So you were talking about a place of shooting it where its head will basically come off. I'm going to say that you, you back up, you shoot, you hit right dead center in the eye. And it causes the internal cogs and everything to fall apart instantly and blows through the back of its head. The other thing that you get is what's called jacks. So when you make a roll, every time that you're 10 points under the thing you're trying to hit, you get a jack. So with a 22, you get one jack. You can use jacks to spin a yarn and get an automatic success on a skill call. So you can basically spend your jack and get, you know, like, hey, I'm going to spin a yarn and this is how this happens. The other thing is raising the stakes. You can add 10% to a skill 
If automatic success isn't appropriate, up to 50%. You get to save jacks. You can have up to five, after, and it's called the river. Uh, you can have five on the river, but after that, you know, you, you start losing them. So you can't, you can't hold more than that. They want us to use them. They want you to use them. So you basically blow this thing's head off. And again, it's eerily quiet. I walk over to the head that I just blew off and I pick it up and I'm like, Cooper, you want this one too? Yes, please. Thank you. Just leave it there. I'll come collect it. If he's got a whole, I mean, if these were the two on the back, what are the odds that the other four inside are the same? I would say pretty high. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, no, good point. So, Cooper, is there something that you could look at this and is there a better way to disarm them than having to shoot them exactly through the eye? I mean, they do take physical damage. This one was torn in half, thrown from a train with pretty much as as much a person would. So, I mean, I don't have time to, you know, deconstruct. In these, these are very complicated things. So it'll take some time. So I think we just have to default to shooting them until they stop. I will say this. Because you are an incredibly intelligent inventor, why don't we do a quick observation roll? So you're, you've got a 45% in that. So just give me an observation roll. Let me know what you get. And I will tell you what you can figure out in like a, a really quick look through of what this thing is made of. That is 19. Excellent. All right. So you're looking over it and... Yes, it's made out of metal, but it's made out of softer metals. They, you know, it's not like steel or anything. Center shots, it, it does seem to have a lot of uh, components in its chest that work the rest of its body. So if you got center mass shots, you might be able to disrupt its movement, though its head works separately from its body, meaning that the algorithms that are going on in the head can keep going if the body's disabled. If you shoot the head, it will cease to function, but if you shoot the body, you will stop it from being able to uh, move around. So the one that got split in half, the reason that it just stopped working completely is because all the connections were broken. Yep, I will relay this information. Body shots are good, we can put them down, please try to collect heads. I feel like they will be important to study later as best as we can. As you're all talking about this, you hear the sound of what has to be a hatch. And you're at the back of the train. This is the first time you've heard any movement. It seems to be closer to the front of the train, the part that is wedged into the gully. You, you hear a hatch, you don't see anything. What do you all want to do? maybe hide, see what comes out, even though we can't see where that is quite yet. I mean, we could do that, yeah. Yeah, I am going to set up behind a little rock formation with my Springfield rifle. You all are able to find hiding spaces that are decent enough to do that. All of you hide real quick. Uh, You start seeing these three-foot-tall beans walking around the train, looking at the train. They're talking in this language you've never heard before. And they're looking down at the remains of the two people that had been attacked. And a few moments later, several taller humanoids come out of the wreckage. They're beat up from the accident. The shorter beings walk into the moonlight, and you see that they have large gray skinned heads with giant black almond eyes and one of them says in perfect English suddenly search the area this was done on purpose now before we go any further I think we need a terror check because you have never seen aliens a terror check is a 50 50 percent roll Uh, you want to roll obviously under 50 percent to make it just because you make it doesn't mean you don't take some sort of lucidity damage. So give me a roll and let me know what you get. My parents believed in demons. Believe in demons. But I never did. I mean, same. But I'm not ashamed to admit they were right. Mm-hmm. And I was wrong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know how we'd explain this to any person with common sense. Oh my. 
37. 32. 78. Oh, no. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'm holding off. Okay, no. Come on. Um, That is... Oh, my God. I think I got 100. So, oopsie. Yeah, that's a critical fail, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 100? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Uh, oh, no. That's that's not good. I'm supposed to be the smooth one. <laughs> <laughs> so, fortunately, your gumption, which I think is a five, reduces your lucidity loss. So, you lose no points. But you also have a critical fail, which means that Marisol just starts fucking shooting. Oh, no. <laughs> just starts picking off people. Bullets start to fly, and I'm going to say she's able to clip one human and one alien, and they all turn and start to fire back in a hail of bullets. And that's where we're going to stop this episode. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, man. Yikes. I'm sorry, fellas. Yeah. No, no. A hundred doesn't happen very often. And when it does, things go really bad. Mm-hmm. Fail forward. We fail, fail forward. forward. <laughs> yep. All right. So thank you all so much. I had fun. I hope you all had fun, too. Where can we find all of you? Let's start with Saint. Hello. I'm Saint or Saint Spider, and uh, you can find me on Twitter. That would be just at Saint Spider TV, and it's all one word. So uh, S A I N T S P I D R T V. Thanks. Hey, I'm Michelle Otis, and you can find me on Twitter at Mishulu. That's M I C H U L H U. You can also find my music and Wes's amazing sound effects through Drive Through RPG, under Plate Mail Games, or through Battle Bards. Hi, I'm Pooja, and you can find me on Twitter at L.A. Daisy Girl. That's L-A-D-E-S-I Girl. And pretty much all the other socials is Forgotten Saves. I also play tabletop role-playing games on It's Probably Okay's Twitch channel and with the Happy Jacks RPG crew. Hi, y'all. You can find me on the internet at Jay Holtham on all your social places. And you can also sometimes find me playing games with Happy Jacks RPG and on It's Probably Okay's Twitch channel. And I am Wes Otis. You can find me at Plate Mail Games on Twitter. You can find the podcast at 12 Sided Stories. That's the number 12 and then Sided Stories on both Twitter and Instagram. And I've actually started posting more on Instagram, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can also find our website spelled out 12 Sided Stories, all one word. If you want to help the show, definitely check out our coffee or our Patreon. Become members there or give us a shout out or give us a review on your favorite platform. Those things all are very helpful. And we will see you next week for more Death Rail. Bye. Bye. Bye.